take this bad boy off right here just because I don't want to be sweating. And it's chilly, but it's not really cold. Hey everyone, Shane here, and today I'm going to be cooking some breakfast on the EcoZoom Versa stove. I've used this stove quite a bit now. I really do like it a lot, and I'm excited to share with you guys uh, some of the things that this stove can do. I'm going to really let the stove kind of speak for itself um, when it comes to the cooking. Just to kind of give you guys a little bit of a heads up of some of the things that it is capable of doing is you can use charcoal briquettes in it, or charcoal. Um, you just go ahead and open up this door right here, load it up with charcoal, get it going, close the door, open up this bottom door here, and allow really good airflow to come in underneath your briquettes. They'll feed up underneath here into this, um, this column that's in the center here, and there's a nice grate on the inside. I'll show you guys some of that in detail, but really what I want to do is I want to focus on what the stove's capable of. I'm going to cook some breakfast out here, and I'm really just going to relax because today, oh, it's gorgeous. It's calm. I just saw a rabbit take off over there. Um, yeah, let's get to it. Whenever I get a stove, I always check a couple things to make sure some of my more favorite items are actually going to, you know, be workable on it. One of the first things I always check is my kettle. Is my kettle going to fit? My kettle will work on top of this EcoZoom. It actually has a lot more room to go. Now, I know my, um, my canteen cup is not going to fit on there. I actually thought about doing this, but this has a coating on it, and then putting my canteen cup on there. But, you know, it looks like it's just painted. Not a big deal. But... So my kettle does fit, which is really, really good because I need, I need my tea. <laughs> and the other one is my skillet. This is my GSI Bugaboo skillet, and it seems to fit really good. This is the 8-inch skillet, um, for those of you who are curious. But it does work really, really well. And uh, I've already used this, so I know it's going to fit, but I'm just kind of letting you guys see some of the pots that it, it is capable of using. So if you're using an 8-inch skillet, you're in luck. Or if you're using something like this type of kettle right here, you're in luck. I wouldn't go much smaller in diameter on the bottom of the base uh, for a cooking pot. Now if you're going to uh, use something or you commonly use something smaller I would say um, you could probably use the grate. I'll give it a shot. I just I hate to admit I don't think it's going to warp but you can use the grate there and just feed it. Especially if you're using coal would be alright but I don't want the wood to hang down. Uh, I want to use the stove for its purpose. The snow's too powdery for me just to stomp it down. It doesn't really do anything, but it's not heavy. I'm not wasting a lot of energy just kicking it out of the way. found a bunch of paracord in here that's super cool all right so I'm a perfectionist whatever way I'm facing I like to have my net or my little my little bag because what I do when I'm hanging out in my hammock whatever hammock I'm using I always use it as a place to put my cell phone because I'm out here in the woods I don't really want to be on my phone in fact my phone's still in my bag this will be good, right? Nice chair to hang out in. I like it. So what I did bring though is I brought my uh, sleeping pad. And the only reason why I bought my sleeping pad was to kind of keep myself from getting cold butt. Because that sucks. I could probably use my jacket, but whatever. I may, may not use my sleeping pad. It kind of depends. But if I start reading my book, I did bring a book. If I start reading that, I'll probably want to keep my butt warm. Yep, yeah, just a really nice, kind of cool spot to be sitting. That's all I needed today. In fact, I can actually move this down a little bit. So the ultra, ugh, the ultralight hammock is kind of cool, but it's uh, it's really narrow. Like 
I think the ultralight hammock's good if you're just hanging out and wanting to use it as a chair or something to sit in, but I wouldn't really suggest it for something to sleep in. I just don't find it that comfortable. It's a good hammock chair though. Got my heavier gloves underneath here that I keep. I'll just stick them right there in that handy little pocket. This is my Hidden Woodsman Haversack. I absolutely love it. This is one of my number one pieces of gear that come along with me. Got this really cool pocket saw. This is the uh, Silky Pocket Boy. Look at that in all its beautiful glory. It's nice. I wear an extra large glove, so it's not really super small. Um, this is the 170 in medium, in case you're curious. Really like it a lot. Get a good view of that sucker. Whew. Pretty neat. Let's get some wood, shall we? So a silky doesn't cut on the push stroke, it cuts on the pull stroke. Effortless, absolutely effortless. Super happy with that. One cut in, baby. One cut in. So the only problem that I'm seeing that I have is own operator air. <laughs> I want to push. I'm used to using my Vaca Laplander. And I don't really need to push a lot with this with this pocket boy. Cool. I like it. This isn't a pocket boy review, guys. This is just me using a saw that I got. I dig it. That's a welcome sound for sure. Oh, it is already lit. Get that wax right there to light. See that little wax? Pretty nice. I'm use this as a kneeling pad. So I'm gonna take some of those smaller sticks that I got Stick them down in there, like that. Because they're gonna catch really good. And the other stuff, I'm gonna start small here. I'm just gonna stick it in right here. I'm gonna let that burn. Oh yeah, starting to catch really, really good. I'm gonna let that burn while I get stuff prepared for some, some tea. I'm gonna have that tea going in no time, boys. No time. Oh, it's doing a great job. It really is. I just keep on feeding. Keep on feeding. Very, very small amount of wood in there. So this is my little seasoning that I mixed up that I've made for my uh, for my vegetables. And uh, you know, I realized that once I started doing this, I didn't have my cutting board with me, which is kind of funny. But it's all right. It looks like my mushrooms they came on. Here's my nail to came on this foam so I'll use the foam 
to do all my cutting on. Not a big deal, right? Not a big deal at all. These are portobello mushrooms. Take a look at this. Oh yeah, that's good. I'm gonna boil a little bit longer. So I was going to, uh, <laughs> I was gonna make some tea and I realized I forgot. Uh, these are my, where I keep all my coffee beans. I ground some coffee earlier, uh, two days ago, and I still had some left over. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make, make some cowboy coffee. A nice boiling water there. Stir it in. Do you see this? Amazing coffee, amazing coffee. Oh yes, thing of beauty. Mm. Oh, delicious. All right, now that we got that up there. Oh, gotta get these vegetables going first, don't we guys? Yes we do. Get the vegetables on there. my vegetables so I can kind of caramelize them. I've got this mixture I made. Mm -hmm. This is just a, a Worcestershire sauce bottle that I use. And it's got a great seal on it so I keep using it. I'm gonna give my stove some more wood because it does such a good job. It just takes all. I'm really liking these Yuko utensils. Man, they're good. So I'm still sauteing the veggies. I'm letting them kind of get up there to, to be nice and tender. Right when they're a little soft is when I'm going to put my steak in. That way it all cooks together really good. I don't want to overcook my vegetables. Alright, so next, the steak that I seasoned with a little bit of snow. <laughs> it's going in. Alright, here we go. Check that out. So the sauce that I make, ooh, here comes the steam. It's gonna caramelize the steak. Keep that steak nice and tender on the inside. It's so hot in there. Put this wood in there. I can, I can hear it igniting. That's cool. Alright, now I don't want my steak overdone. Let's see. Look at that. See that? 
Mm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's nice. So what I did was I always carry I always carry this, right? What I do with this is this is my usually it's my heavy cover canteen uh, skillet. I usually just put it over the top whenever I'm cooking, right? But I want to watch this food because I don't want to overcook my steak. But my steak is done, and the stove is still doing a really good job. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to cover it. Give myself some eggs. Juices left over from my uh, steak. And I gotta be careful because this stove is freaking hot. Look at that thing go. Here I am using my my Yuko utensil because I really like it, but I have a, I have a wooden spatula right here. I just didn't even have. Didn't even grab it. Look at that. Done. So, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take these eggs. I'm going to do that. So, I can take snow, stick it in here. my pan out. Let's look at this thing. Let's look at this business right here. Let me grab my fork. Let's take a look. Oh yeah. So, I love showing everybody food that you can make out in the woods. Let's give it a go. Ready? Mmm. Oh yeah. Mm hmm So doing some awesome steak tips and eggs. Right out here. Mm-hmm. Let's tell you a little bit about the stove. It's super versatile, and uh, you know you can cook steak tip and eggs <laughs> out in the woods. I went out and got all this wood, and I used maybe a quarter of the wood that I probably even got. I didn't need to get all this wood. In fact, I didn't even use any of the really big stuff. I used the stuff that was probably no no bigger around than my thumb. I fed it with some bigger wood at first, but I, I didn't need to. There was no need for it. Uh, the stove, 100% did what it was supposed to do. Um, efficiently. Very, very efficiently. I mean, I'm fed. I'm gonna try it with some uh, charcoal. I think that'd be fun. And, uh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Cool thing is, is there's still a lot of heat resonating off the stove. And I've managed to cook food, eat it, make more coffee. 
Did you guys tell any of you guys how just really good cowboy coffee is? When you make cowboy coffee and you boil it, you boil out a lot of the acid. So what you're left with once you cool it down with your cold water on top and pour it into your whatever vessel you're using, whatever cup you're using, you've got the smoothest coffee. So if you haven't done cowboy coffee, I highly recommend it. It is so smooth. Um, now I use a couple different uh, blends and I've got some friends who are actually doing their own coffee so when I go through what I have right now I'm gonna order their coffee and I'm gonna check it out because I do like coffee um, honestly I only let myself drink coffee in the mornings and I drink tea throughout the day but mm, if you have not done cowboy coffee just do yourself a favor do it do it do it do it I have a video on cowboy coffee um, so good but anyway, let me get back to this EcoZoom stove. Um, this stove is super, super versatile. Um, as you as you notice, I didn't use a lot of wood. I didn't use a lot of wood at all. And look at this. I left this bottom port open. Now, if I wanted to slow my cook down, if I wanted to slow down my flame, I could have closed this. I could have. It wouldn't have been a problem. I just have snow all around it. I could have closed this up. And I could have cut off the air supply underneath the uh, grate that's on the inside and in doing that I would have just maintained really nice coals so there's a lot of different things that you can do to manipulate however you're cooking out here another thing that I can do is I can add charcoal in here which I'm gonna do that next in fact that'll probably be my next video because I'm really excited to try it you can put charcoal in here and uh, close this up without any sticks in it preferably. Then you can close it up and open this up to really get yourself a really nice good burn. And I would imagine that if you wanted to slow down your uh, charcoal cooking, you could close this up as well and just kind of let the heat resonate on the inside of the chamber. So this is technically, this is still a rocket stove. It's got really nice insulation all the way around it and um, it really does impress. Now, is it something that you're normally gonna bring out with you while you're camping uh, like this or hiking? Probably not. But is it something that people who are looking for survivability, yes, is it people who are maybe more in the prepper style or lifestyle? Oh, definitely. Um, but will it, will it work for people who just wanna go out and cook over the weekend if you're camping, RVing, car camping? and you're not going to be fussing around with a bunch of stuff, but you want to cook on an open fire? Most definitely. If you're living off grid, um, my wife and I have looked a lot into more self-sustaining um, items. This is something that would definitely work fantastic for off-grid living. Um, the amount of fuel that I used versus the amount of output that it had makes it something that just really it, it still blows my mind a little bit how little how little what I used versus you know I mean the meal I cooked now is everybody really good at making one pot type meals no no that that I think is is really is a learning curve I grew up in a household where we always threw everything in one pot and made a big dish now there's gonna be a lot of people who want to make numerous things and they're not used to cooking in one big pot um, should, that's a small learning curve, but that shouldn't be something that would ever stop you, ever. Um, you could put a really nice big pot up on top of this, and you could cook, you know, a beef stew, you could cook spaghetti. I mean, if you can cook it, you can cook it on this, no doubt. I did carry it in a little ways today. That's not a problem. It wasn't overly heavy, but it is heavy. Um, it's not a hiking stove, like I said, but it's something that I think if you enjoy outdoor cooking, you should have this in your as I like to call it, have it in your stove stable. <laughs> or your arsenal, whatever you prefer to, to call it. But I really do like this stove a lot. It's fun. And it is heavy duty. Man, it is freaking heavy duty. Once it cools down some more, when I'm done eating, I'll dump out what's left on the inside here and show you guys, because I know people like to see how good and how true the burn really was. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm looking down inside of it and there's nothing. There's just a very small amount of ash on the inside, which means I got a 100% burn. It's really cool to be hanging out here. I mean, the river is just right there. Hanging out here in the woods. 
I ate a lot of food. <laughs> so, um, I'm not even a little bit chilly just because I have a lot of calories that I can burn. And I guess I, I could say that I got a little used to it. It's, I just looked at my thermometer hanging on my bag over there. It's 15 degrees Fahrenheit, but there's no wind and I'm in the sun, so it feels great. I've been sitting here looking at different bird nests and stuff like that. I've been reading this book that I have. Um, this is Shelter Shacks and Shanties. It's a classic guide to building wilderness shelters um, by DC Beard. I've read it already once, and it's it's really just a fantastic book. I mean, if it's something that you're interested in, like as far as shelters and stuff like that, um, there are, let me show you here, there's really great just like Iroquois pole and bark style shacks that they, they kind of break down and explain a little bit of the history behind them and, and how to build it and, you know, furniture, just... It's a really fun read. I mean, if you're interested in any of that stuff, and it tells you, like over here I'm reading right now, it's talking about how how to put a proper fire um, into a into a fire pit or a fireplace that you may put on the inside of your your shack or your shanty or your you know whatever type of shelter you're making. But I just really enjoy this type of stuff, and uh, I don't know if if it's if it's something that you're into or something that you like. Maybe you have the book, maybe you don't. You probably dig it. It's under sports and recreation, camping and outdoors. Oh, I think I bought it on Amazon for for probably ten bucks, and it sells for eleven ninety five. So it wasn't. I think I probably even got it cheaper than that. I got it a long time ago. But uh, I don't know. Like, look at this bog ken. How it's a uh, it's a thatched bog ken. How it's like up off the ground if you live in a swampy area. I know some friends of mine who live in swampy areas who'd really like that. It's a fun read. So I'm out here today to check out the stove and just kind of enjoy cooking a good meal and, and taking some time to myself. It's uh we're always we're always stuck on the grind and then we get the grind on both sides of us with, you know, work and then our normal lives and it's nice to take a little bit of time and just do a slow down and smooth it out a little bit and I'm really enjoying it setting my hammock up kinda like a chair it's really comfortable I'm not getting cold butt I'm not getting any breeze up here any wind so it's beautiful I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna read I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my afternoon before I have to go and and do my normal parental duties. I took the day off work today. I worked, uh, I got, it was my anniversary at work and I, I had a bunch of PTO, paid time off, put on my paycheck because I didn't take a lot of vacation last year and it's kind of depressing, really. So I was like, you know, I'm just gonna take a day to myself and come out into the woods and relax and that's what I'm gonna do because I, you know, we deserve it. Everybody deserves it. You know, don't overwork yourself. I'm the worst person to be saying that, but don't overwork yourself. Get outside and enjoy yourself if this is what you like to do or whatever your hobbies may be. But for me, right now, I don't think I'd want to be any other place. This is good. Alrighty. Well, here is the stove. I guess probably the best way to, would just be to dump it straight out the top, right? Let's see what we got. Oh, out the door, I guess. Probably the best. That's it. That's it. All the cooking that I did. No solid pieces at all. That's it. So you can take that. Cover it up. really matters in the snow but it's just kind of funny to do really that that was it that's cool that kind of impressed me <laughs> that's it so I'll put my take my stove take my grate over here and I'll I'll hook this on the handle like this then I'll take Take this other side over here and just stick this through there like that. And 
you bring it over here to the handle. If you guys are ever in snowy areas or snowy, snowy places, it's easy to lose stuff in the snow. That's it. So now I can grab my handle. I don't have to worry about this thing losing. Or I don't have to worry about losing it. Just walk on out of here holding it by the handle. It's cool. I dig it a lot. I'm going to pull you down a little bit here. Hopefully, hopefully you can see me. Camera looks crooked. If you feel like you're crooked, you just let me know, alright? And I'll, uh, I'll try to make it better for you. Alright. 